All right, all right. Yes, we got to move. We got to move. Short in person here with the man, Handsome Shrek. What's up, what's up? And we have our producer, Jay Bone, also in the house today. And it is quiet. our first. <laughs> <laughs> it's not our first podcast. The second take, Disputed. Happening guess, on the first take. I, do we have to put the colon in there? So it's second take, colon, disputed. Or is it just second take, disputed? Or yeah. should I just pause in between? So second take, pause, disputed. I don't know. We'll I mean, figure it out. We'll figure it out. The pause is powerful. The pause? Did you like that pause? The pause is powerful. All right. All right. So that's what we'll do. We'll do second take, pause, disputed. Well, we're headed off are to... Are we disputing this name right now? Well, we, we, did, we have our first dispute. <laughs> Trying to figure out... Well, the, well, actually, I guess this would be this would be our second dispute because there was an issue with trying to figure out how to get the podcast so that we're both affiliated with it. Right now, the podcast just says it's me by Dante Howard. Short by person. by shorter in person, no mention of Handsome Shrek. So that was uh, a bit of an issue on yeah. last week. We talked about it. We discussed it. Well, we didn't really discuss it. We just, Dante's like, I am making this podcast all about me. <laughs> well, I mean, it should be. I mean, when you sit back and think about it sometimes, it, it, be, it should be all about me. But we are headed down to Virginia. It's a beautiful day. Headed down to play golf. Creighton Farms. Creighton Farms. Home of Jack Nicholas. And then Jack Is it Nicholas really? Invitational. Yeah. yeah, he has a house there. He does have a house there. Yeah. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll check it out. This, right. this is also the house that Jude, that Gruden and uh, RG3. RG3 had a house, yeah. or had a house, had a house. Uh, I, I, you know, I think uh, RG3, uh, he decided as a, a show of goodwill to Joe Flacco, he's letting Joe stay there with his uh, 15 kids, 16th on the way. <laughs> well, Joe's been balling out this season, so he, he probably deserves one of those big houses. Yeah. He's been uh, he's been dropping some um, some very nice, we'll, say, we'll just say very nice passes. Uh, with his his new re- receiving crew, so. Well, here's a little fun fact for you. Okay. So you know it's all about Joe and how horrible the offense was last year. True. Joe Flacco. Mm-hmm. If you look at last year and took you take the entire receiving core that Joe Flacco had, right? Not a single player from his receiving core of last year has a reception this season. <laughs> Is that right? Are, are they even still in the league? They can. You can fact check it. No. <laughs> I mean, I think Steve Smith Sr. has caught more passes sitting on the uh, the table, the booth, whatever he is. What is he on the ESPN now? He's, he, whatever he's on, he's great. He <laughs> and Michael Irvin up against each other, is, it's just the best thing ever. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, how do we get right in the NFL? What's going on here? What's going on in the NFL? Uh, well, I mean, how do we get right to the NFL? I thought we were talking about... We're, we're going to be all over the place. That is that that is what we're going to do. And, you know, it's kind of like how we are in real life. We're all over the place. You know, it's, we can't focus on one thing for too long. I think... I so, think we, would you say, uh-huh, instead, of, instead of second take disputed, it should just be like ADD? Is it, should be instead of STD? It should be ADD? ADD! <laughs> STD, ADD! <laughs> Lord have mercy! See? <laughs> See what just happened there, folks? We end up all over the place. It gets no better than that. I don't, I don't know. Like the song says, I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. And that's what we're doing. We're moving all over the place. And guess what? Hmm? Lucky you, all of you listeners. Or unlucky you. Ooh. Touche. <laughs> it's that, should, a whole that, thing. that should be the title. That should be the title of this first podcast. That is a fantastic idea, K-Dog. All right. Let's make it happen. Done deal. Ding! <laughs> I'm like you. Wait, wait, why are you doing mouth sound effects? This whole app has, <laughs> has sound effects in it. Well, well, do the sound effects. You're the sound effect guy. Well, I go for you, it. Guess what? Hmm? Had you found a way that we could co-host this, I could be using the sound effects on my phone right Hold now. Hold the damn phone up to the mic. <laughs> duh. All right, all right. Touche. Duh. Can you, do you have a duh sound effect? <laughs> you know, Maybe. <laughs> I haven't figured this thing out yet. But hell, while we're on sports, we might as well just talk about it. And and uh, and, and and our producer man is awfully quiet over here. He's just 
<laughs> well, hey, look, I, I appreciate him giggling and uh-huh. paying attention to the road because I don't feel like dying on our way to. Uh... Ah, screw it. Hey, yeah, you know. Well, let's talk about another dispute. So we had this big discussion on what we were going to wear shirt-wise today, folks. <laughs> so we needed to figure out what color we we're going to wear. Are we going to wear? Uh, company swag or we not going to wear company swag or what have you so finally i was able to to uh find a nice polo nice three dollar polo from walmart shout out to walmart <laughs> <laughs> and it's infantry blue for those who know me i was in the infantry and uh that's that's oh plenty of podcasts talking about that but anyway so we we decided that we're going to wear blue. So we all have different shades of blue. This is actually fantastic. Three shades of blue. Three different shades of blue. Sam will be the fourth. And when we pick up our fourth, it'll be another shade of blue. Oh, we got it all going on. Let me tell you. We'll drop some pictures later. Don't worry. But these some bitches <laughs> did not tell me that they were wearing shorts. So I have pants on. Well, you, it's you supposed know, to be, uh, you know. It's called checking the weather. It's going to be 88 oh, degrees today. Okay. Check the weather, he says. Check hey, the weather. Right, now, let's get a K-Dog exaggeration counter going. <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so, so, it's already whatever the temperature is right now. It's hot. Well... Granted, you, you are the easiest person I've ever seen sweat in my entire tell you life. Something. I can sweat in an air-conditioned room. It's so ridiculous. I don't even know what the hell. But I have pants on. So the plan is pants to on. find... <laughs> <laughs> well, easy. The, the plan is to find a store. Somehow on our trip here. Find a store so that I can run in and grab some shorts. Granted, we are already, per the uh, GPS, going to be 10 minutes late because of Dante. What is this lateness you're talking about? There's no such thing as late. Yeah. The shit doesn't get started until we arrive. Until we arrive. See, the producer man understands. Mm. Mm-hmm. Come on, Come on K-Dog. So, if the GPS is now saying we're going to be 10 minutes past the time that Handsome Shrek thinks we should be there, it's just going to be 20 because I need to run in and grab the proper apparel. You like that word? I like that. You like that word, right? So uh, there. I don't know. He, he's going to be so happy if he finds some uh, damn shorts, I'll tell you that. I'm I'm going crazy. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> I might get some athletic shorts with no Yay! pockets. <laughs> I'm to make oh. those sounds. <laughs> yeah, you're going to go crazy with those sounds, right? I got I to gotta download some maps. Oh, shit. Well, Our right. producer is, we're going yeah. fast and furious. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Well, we don't want that <laughs> quite yet. We don't want to be like that uh, NASCAR robo thing they had going on this weekend. Oh, See the what? crashes on that? Yeah, so they, they got a Charlotte, where it's normally just an oval. They configured it so that there was a roval, so half road course, half oval type of thing. And it was crashes all over the place. Mm. I'm a fan of NASCAR, if you kids didn't know. Oh. Speaking of crashes and things going boom, mm-hmm. let, let's talk about Earl Thomas and how his entire contract has exploded <laughs> upon one broken play. <laughs> Earl Thomas, safety for uh, Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, I'll tell you. Broke his leg. Lower, lower leg. Broke his lower leg in a game yesterday. He was He was holding out. Yeah, it's karma. He shouldn't have been holding out. <laughs> oh, hold. so that that's the way that's that, that's the position you take on Absolutely. It? <laughs> well, some would say that that's the reason why the players hold out is because they don't have any any uh, leverage or or there's no guaranteed contracts and things like that. Right. So well, look, these if players, they were to get injured, then this is this is what happens. These players are getting paid for that risk. You don't, you don't go to college in a, in a four-year program, go three years with a 4.0 and go, you know what, I'm doing so great, give me my degree now, or else I ain't going back to class. 
No. No. You finish it out. After classes, you can finish it three years. What are you talking about? It's so ridiculous. No. Hey, look, it's called it's called getting insurance out on your body. People sell it. Come on. Getting insurance, but do they sell insurance for that type of field? Either way, it doesn't matter because. Again, this is the reason why the players hold out, and this is the reason why Le'Veon Bell's holding out, and and so forth. So you know, Khalil Mack, all these guys. So you know, should they should they get guaranteed contracts, or should should they get paid more, or what have you? These are the reasons why the guys do it. Hey, but you know, whether you agree or disagree, they sign their original and honor your original contract. Show that but, not but only you're a great but player, that, but does that go both ways? Does does the team honor the contract, or do they just send your ass on when look, they're ready to send you on? Look, when you sign your initial contract mm-hmm. and you're signed on, you're getting paid this money to show, hey, I'm a great player and I'm durable. I can last throughout this entire length what? of this contract. No one ever said that. They're getting paid for the risks they take. Look, see, I think I think I think you're gonna you're kind of getting caught up on 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 the pay. And, those type of things. Either way you put it, for whatever position or whatever sport or what have you, you know, there there comes a, a certain stipend with that. There comes some pay with that. Now, if you outplay that contract, right? Mm-hmm. Or if it's time to get a new contract and things like that, these are the these are what what is put forth, collective bargaining, what have you, you're allowed to hold out and then see what happens. So he held out, didn't get the contract, came back, <laughs> legs busted. Now, will he get a new contract now? <laughs> yeah, and I tell you what, it's going to be significantly smaller. <laughs> How about that, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, all I'm going to say is don't be a little bitch and break your leg. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> is that what he is now? <laughs> yeah. We all need them strong K-Dog guys. Oh my God! Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, look. But it didn't have enough milk. I mean, what the hell? No, look, what are you talking about? Look, if you're gonna break your leg, uh-huh. at least break your leg on a play that you break up a touchdown. Don't give up a touchdown and break your leg. <laughs> <laughs> so, so well, well, above all that, now the funniest part after after the leg is broken and he's getting rolled off the field, <laughs> he turns and he flips the ball. <laughs> To his own team. Let, let's, be, let's be honest. I don't know if you saw any of the play after he was injured on the field, but Pete Carroll was getting down there like, was it, was it Izzo or who was it from uh, Michigan Michigan State in the basketball game when he just got down there? It was pretty much making out with his player that was hurt on the court. <laughs> it was, it was, I don't know who. Tom Izzo? Is that who you was talking it about? Izzo? I have no idea. It's not Tom Izzo. No. I don't know. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm about to say it. It's it an NCAA like tournament, and it's like eight years ago. If you said that he stoically stared at him, that might be Tom Ezzo's style. <laughs> so who knows if Pete, Pete Carroll probably got in his ear and was like, see, bitch, you held out, and now you ain't getting paid. Wow, so, really? Oh, dude, Pete Carroll's a sly, very, I hate that guy. That well, guy is. Well, we know he left USC because they were about to have some NCAA situation well, going on. So well, yeah, it's he, all Reggie Bush's fault. Well, of course, the Bush push. The Bush push. <laughs> what the hell is a Bush push? <laughs> you don't know what that is? I can't afford it. <laughs> See, hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. Handsome Shrek, you're telling me you don't know what the Bush push. Don't you Google it either, goddammit. Put the phone down. you telling me you don't know what the Bush push is. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. I mean, how are you even the co-host of this podcast if you don't know what the Bush Bush is? I mean, did Reggie Bush, like, get hooked up with salt and pepper? What's going on? Don't <laughs> 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 oh, <shit. laughs> No, Reggie Bush got hooked up with a Kardashian, but that's a whole different story. A whole different story. Wait, wait, like Lamar? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he didn't he didn't end up in a coma. It's a whole thing. Just calm down. <laughs> wait, where is Reggie Bush these days? <laughs> Out of the league. He's probably Is he college, college, like college commentator or something? Who knows? Maybe we'll Google that. Uh, maybe we'll see him when we stop and get Dante some pants. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? I think I've seen him on um 
the one of those NCAA like commentating shows. It's it's a strong possibility. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I mean, our producer here, just so you all know, he doesn't really watch the NFL. He's all about Penn State. Penn State only. So let's talk about Penn State. Let's do. We all fired up. So Very interesting up. game. Uh, hey, by the way, we uh, we're in a. Uh, well, 95 right now, the speed limit is 65, and we started talking about Penn State, we're already going 90. <laughs> my head is pinned to the back of the seat right now. This is so, this is so crazy. Let me let me get my uh, seatbelt on. This is yeah, you have to pass your seatbelts. <laughs> <laughs> so, my boys from Penn State. I think they had a really good game this weekend, didn't they? They had a really great game. I got two drives. Several questionable tackles. Several? Several. <laughs> what do you mean several? several? Several. What happened? Well, we came out in the first half and used a little bit of the Penn State whiteout magic. Uh huh. And held Ohio State to 96 total offensive yards. Mm-hmm. Whereas we had around 300 offensive yards. Beautiful. Decided that we needed to just not make field goals, decided we need to fumble on our 25-yard line and take a 13-7 lead in halftime, which, looking at the stats and looking at the field of the game, should have been more of like a 20 to nothing or, (laughs) dare I say, a 24 to nothing lead. Wow. I'm going to apologize to any Ohio State fans out there right now, but this is going to be a very biased... Why are you apologizing for Ohio State State. Fans. This is gonna be a very biased show because Ohio State sucks, and let's be they real, do uh, they do suck. Urban should be uh, fired, probably in jail right now. <laughs> well, I, w- I wouldn't go so far as jail, but you kind of sort of know what you're getting when you get Urban Meyer. You're gonna get a guy who's pretty shady. His teams are gonna win a lot. His quarterback's gonna do nothing in the pros. That type of thing. Yeah. So, sorry, derail. Go back. Yes. Let's, get, let's take it back oh, to the Penn State game. I thought we were going to give Tim Tebow there for a second. We've got to <laughs> rein it back in. Right, 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 no, 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 because he loves Tim Tebow. Maybe Urban should spend some more time with Tim Tebow. Whoa, whoa. To go over his moral code. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tim Tebow's a good dude. Maybe, maybe Tim Tebow could fix him up a little bit. Yes, yeah, yes. Tim, so Tim Tebow's a good dude, right? And I get pulled over by a cop. Yeah. All right. So... We felt the game shift a little bit. Mm-hmm. Came out in the second half, and I, I think that the first drive of the second half is the most important drive of most football games. That's Agreed. where either you're down, you stop them, you pull the momentum back, and you come out, and you kind of get yourself back on track, or you go the opposite way, and the other team comes out and just kind of blows your doors off. <laughs> I thought that's what was going to happen to Penn State. Ohio State came out and rolled down the field on us. Went up 14-13. I was like, well, here we go. We came out, next next drive, went three and out. And it wasn't one of those three and outs where you gained like five, eight yards and it was close. We lost about 14 yards in that three and out. Oh, my gosh. Ohio State came back, marched down the field on us, and they committed one of their several personal fouls of the game uh-huh. and had to re-kick a field goal, which they missed. Very good. That gave Trace McSorley, who is actually Trace McWizard, a chance to come out and show why he is one of the best players in the country. Led our team down the field. And we made it down to the 20. So we fizzled out a little bit. This was James Franklin's first pivotal missed call. (laughs) First. (laughs) Fourth and one on the 20, down one point. He decided to go for it instead of kick the field goal and take the points. Uh Uh-huh. Hate the call. And we get all back to Ohio State. Hey, I appreciate your input. Well, <laughs> we came back, scored two more touchdowns, mm-hmm. went up by 13 in that weird scoring game. Seven minutes left in the game. Penn State has been here before. Fun fact, our last three losses, not including this one, we were up by two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, blew the leads, and lost by a total of seven points. Wow. In this game, we performed similarly, came out, gave up 175 yards of offense in two drives with seven minutes left, Woo. went down by one point, but they gave us a chance. We had two minutes left. So you're saying there's a chance. We had a chance. We put the game in Trace's hands, or 
I guess we should have put the game in Trace's hands. <laughs> we came out, got down to fourth and five. And this is where, dare I say, it is one of the worst calls I've ever seen in football. Ooh, that's a strong one. Wow. Let's hear it. What, what happened? We came out, Trace McSorley had 460 yards of offense. Mm. Fourth and five, we handed the ball off to Miles Sanders, who had 37 yards of offense, and he got stopped for a two-yard loss. And my brother was at the game, and he said it felt like the air was let out of the stadium, which had nearly 111,000 fans in it. Wow. And we just sat there and watched Ohio State take two knees and walk off with victory in a game that I don't think anybody thinks that Ohio State outplayed us in. And now wow. we're playing for a New Year's Six Bowl instead of a birth in the college football playoff. I tell very, you what, very sad time in September. Very I tell you what, I didn't watch any bit of that game, but I feel like I just relived it right there. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I felt, I felt the emotions with you. On that, hey, look, I'm gonna try to do. Now, to try he, to do. he did call. Did coach called two timeouts and then came up with that play, right? Ooh. There were three total timeouts called. Ohio State decided to throw a timeout in there too. Oh wow! It was like an inbounds play in a basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> and after all that, you would think that he would come out with that back of the napkin, just the, the play. This, this is the play that we're gonna run plays. one time every twenty years. One type time play. in your 20 years. It's like the play that's in the back of the book in The Water Boy, the Henry Winkler design. <laughs> and nope, we decided to do a, hand, a delayed draw up the middle. Ohio State decided that they were going to call one of the plays defensively. And if you look at the replay, they did two twists, and we had three of our five down linemen blocked nobody. Oh. It hurt. It hurt a lot to watch. <laughs> I woke up that night in the middle of the night, thought my son woke up, and the first thing I thought when I opened my eyes was how the hell is that <laughs> the fuck? <football? laughs> it amazed me at how quickly it came back to me. Oh, man. Uh, it's going to hurt for a while. Yeah, yeah, it, it typically does when uh, you invest so much into these games and, and to the teams you root for and the teams you love, and then... Well, hey, things change like that. Boom. You know, it's sad and all for Penn State. Not really a Penn State fan, but something laughable. Mm-hmm. Very funny to happen this weekend to another blue and white team. Mm-hmm. Did anybody catch you in that Colts game? No. Oh, my God. Apparently, they were sipping the same Kool-Aid as the uh, Penn State head coach. Uh-huh. Fourth, or actually, fourth down, overtime, two minutes to go. Actually, it was less than two minutes. It was uh, like 28 seconds to go. Um, going against, uh, who was it, Houston. We're going to need a fact check. That might be the second Kate Oliver exaggeration. <laughs> the counter might be on two. <laughs> <laughs> fact check that. So they're on their own 40. Granted, this is overtime. Mm-hmm. Both teams have already kicked the field goal. Next score wins. Indy goes, you know, it's fourth down. We don't want to tie. We want to give you guys the win. So let's ah. go for it on fourth down. And just spike it in the dirt. <laughs> One of the greatest calls <laughs> I've ever seen to end an NFL game. So, <laughs> so they turn the ball over on downs, and then what happened? Houston, yeah. Houston moves in the field goal yeah. range. Deshaun Watson does Deshaun Watson. He's like, uh-huh. oh, guess what? I have this guy called uh, DeAndre Hopkins. I throw it to him Pretty for 27 good. yards. Yeah. And we're just going to kick the field goal for uh, the win. That's it, game, set, match? Game, set, match. You know, I think it's interesting that in this, uh, what, what are we in? The fourth week of the NFL has already been like eight or nine overtime, overtime. games yeah. with three ties already, two ties, oh. something like that. It's, it, this, is, uh, this is pretty It's pretty weird. What, there's nothing weird about it. Oh, I'm sorry. If you look at all the rules and the rules committee, they, they, they hand it down to give these uh, referees all the power in the world. Vegas and the referees are controlling these games and making close, keep them close, <laughs> and try to keep everybody. It, it's like it's like the participation award. Every team gets to participate. All the fans get to stay involved in the game until the end. <laughs> well, not not the Pittsburgh fans last night. No, no. Those no. seats. Well, all the people dressed up as yellow seats last night at the end of that game. Don't you know? Phenomenal. Don't you know? The Ravens are one of the most hated organizations in the uh, entire NFL. Why? I, I do know. Why? 
because we go, oh, you want us to keep the games close? No, no, we don't play that kind of stuff. Nope, nope, we ain't going to listen to you. We're just going to... What, what are you talking about? The Ravens always play close games. <laughs> We're not and they always end up losing in, in the fourth quarter. We're not talking about last year. We're talking about the last 21 years. What are you talking about? Uh... Well, uh, <laughs> whoa, 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 sir. Whoa. Don't bring up old stuff, all right? <laughs> Since 96, how many Super Bowls do them Cowboys have? Wait a minute. How do we get on the... See, this is what I love. <laughs> this is what I love. Now, listen up, folks. No matter what, people will always come back and come at me over the Cowboys. But this is my motherfucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! So, I thought it was Carlos. Though. So I, I will go. Two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I will go thermo nuclear on his ass over it. If I cared that much. If I cared that much. Now, the thing I love is maybe. Back at the days when the Cowboys were actually winning Super Bowls in the '90s, I would care when people would come at me over the Cowboys, but it it just doesn't even matter anymore. Certainly, I'm a Cowboys fan. Love them. Always will. Terps fan as well. In college, I get shit over that as well. I'm not one of those ones that will change just for change's sake. I have the teams that I love. And I will always love them. I have the sports that I love. Lacrosse being at the top. You all know that. Football's right there. Played it a shit ton of my life. I thought he was going to get a NASCAR. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it's always no, uh, lacrosse. The, the only fast car you drove are the uh, just tanks that you have two stick to push forward. <laughs> 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 is that the right? No, I guess it's not a tank. What is it's, it? It's, a, it's an APC, an armored personnel carrier. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, drove that thing in hot-ass Mojave Desert. Again, these are all stories that will be coming out in future podcasts. <laughs> future podcasts. <laughs> it's going to be great. But, yeah. So, again, you know, those are uh, the teams I love, the sports I love. And we'll talk about it. And certainly, bring it on. Come at me about all my teams because I will come right back. I don't care. I love it. Besides, young handsome Shrek has no idea which team he loves. He loves players. And Duke. Whoa, whoa. And, <laughs> yeah. and Tom Brady. And definitely Tom Brady. Look, there's no arguing the fact Tim Tom Brady, Brady is the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. Nope. <laughs> Tim Tebow was the, the second most greatest underrated quarterback. quarterback to ever play. The guy's a winner. He didn't look pretty, he won but he won. Ten games in his career. And then he never got a shot ever again. And that should tell you something. This is the NFL. It's 32 teams. The average team carries two quarterbacks. 64 spots. And he can't get one. I don't know. I mean, talk to Vince Young. He also could have gone to CFL. He had plenty of opportunities to do that, but he didn't want to. He wants to be the quarterback. So CFL doesn't have quarterbacks? He wants to be an NFL quarterback. Oh, what the hell? What are you talking about here? And then he wanted to be a baseball player. How's that working out? Now he's an anchor. <laughs> <laughs> what is he on Good Morning America or something? <laughs> you gotta love it. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I was watching some um, TV um, show, and then 11 o'clock came on. like, nah, 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 nah. Tim Tebow came once at a prayer and said, all right, go to bed now, everyone. <laughs> Hey, so, so Tim Tebow says, say, Late night prayer. <laughs> <laughs> he reads you bedtime stories now. Is that <laughs> you love him that much? <laughs> Does Tim Tebow have a podcast? Uh, you think Tim Tebow will come on the guest for us? J Bone, get on that. Our producer, man, he's he's on. the one who's uh who's responsible for getting guests. I'll, I'll probably have to take back that Urban Meyer quote earlier, but I'll, I'll, reach out. I'll reach out. Maybe he can come on and debate you about Urban Meyer. But again, he is another debate. He's well, another sure. example of... He's not going to debate it. He's going to say, well, let's not even talk about Urban Meyer. Let's just say a prayer to all the victims in this entire thing. 
the victims of what? I don't know, whatever Urban Meyer didn't report. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> we, let's, let's not get into super controversial things on our first podcast. We do want people to tune back in in the future. <laughs> We just lost the entire state yeah. of Ohio. <laughs> the entire state of Ohio just logged off. Enough of these guys. <laughs> gotta go, gotta go. Uh, but uh, so that's that. That's um, that's podcast number one. It was Help to Skelter. It was all over the place. And that's pretty much what you're gonna get from us. You're gonna get Help to Skelter, you're gonna get all over the place. In the future, we plan to have guests on. We plan to talk about a lot of different things. We are in to a lot of different things, engineering, health and fitness. But today, it was all about football and apparently, sports. Apparently. Apparently. Yeah. And, and, and stupid uh, noises from handsome Shrek. Look, all, all I know is if I don't get the recognition I want, as a co-host of this podcast, I'm going to hold out. He's going to hold out. I'm going to hold out. He's going to hold out, and then we're going to break his freaking leg. Maybe we'll break his leg while we're playing golf today. And you know, Ooh, you know what's that sounds you know, like a, you know what's like weird, guys? Convenient accident. So, so it was sunny and hot. <laughs> now, are we rolling into like rolling into some fog? It looks like um, Long the walking dead. <laughs> yeah. Car. Maybe if they weren't so damn dirty. So my pants got dirty from leaning on the car, putting the trying to figure out how to put the golf clubs in the trunk three engineers and we couldn't figure out how to get three sets of golf clubs in the trunk. it's the whole thing but uh, eventually we got it, we got it. and that's actually what was making casual, us late yeah the only casual was the pants really. <laughs> yeah the only, the only issue is the dirty pants now so, so are the pants dirty enough that we can just take scissors to them and make them shorts oh i like the way you're thinking that ought to work out really well at this uh country I, club. I tell you it's, it's <laughs> by the way it's a private club and shorter in person back here he decided last time we're rolling through that he said turn up the music you're playing right now wind any windows ignore the gatekeeper and roll right on through now does that sound like something i would do or does it sound like something has some track who was driving by the way i was driving (laughs) so i can't make a man do anything he doesn't want to do what were we listening to that was uh buster rhymes <laughs> Which is probably something we should listen to right now. <laughs> By the way, I'm pretty sure the guard was about 97 years old. He was 103. At least. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. What's, it, what's the counter? Yeah, the counter. <laughs> 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 number, three, number three on the K dog. On the K dog, he counter. He was pretty old. I mean, I mean, he was pretty old, and all he could do was point to whichever way we were supposed to go. So we went. Yeah, so that's that. Podcast number one. We're going to sign off now. Maybe we, we need some outro music. Maybe maybe Bustin' Rhymes will be our outro music. We'll see if uh, if we could do that. Oh, well, we can uh, always add that in the, the back end, right? Yeah. Of course, on the back end. Post-production. No post-production. No post-production. Post-pro. <laughs> see, our producer is right on it. So, right. so what did we say this one was going to be called? This one's unlucky you. That's right. So you all are unlucky to be listening to us. Ugh. Or, or maybe you're lucky to be listening to us. Who knows? It's up to you to decide. I don't know. I feel pretty unlucky right now. It's up to you to let us know. Hey, listen. So you're actually able to go in and leave us voice messages of uh, any questions or comments that you have. And, uh, and you might even make the next podcast. Yeah. So. And again, we can talk about anything. We can talk about anything. I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty healthy, Scott. Again, it's healthy. Marvel v. DC. I don't care. Oh, 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 oh. It was Baltimore Comic Con this weekend. I did oh, not make it. Luke Cage was there. Yeah, I heard. And Mr. Will Wheaton. Who? Will Wheaton. Oh, my man, Wesley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Star Trek Next Generation for you kids out there. And for everyone else, for you younger kids who don't know, he's the guy that's on Big Bang Theory. Is he really? Oh, yeah. He's Sheldon's arch enemy best friend. Really? I've never seen one episode. Not one. That's unfortunate. I don't know. It's a pretty good show. Well, again, uh, it looks like we can't talk pop culture here because apparently uh, Dante doesn't watch the shows. 
I watch a lot of shows. I just don't watch that one. So how about that? Do you like apples? <laughs> hey! <laughs> I'm pushing back in the head. <laughs> I don't like them apples. <laughs> That's right. So we are, we're physically assaulting each other and everything. Like, this is this is just a crazy podcast. And this, this is the longest outro. Yeah, I'm signing off. <laughs> yeah, all right, so we're out. We'll uh, catch us on the next podcast. Who knows when, how, when we're going to be doing we're this. Back into it. Multiple <laughs> days, once a week, once a month. Who the hell knows? Just uh, subscribe and uh, wait for it. So that's that. Say goodnight, Shrek. Goodnight, Shrek. J-Bone. Goodnight, Shrek. Goodnight, Shrek.